Hey everybody, welcome to Backers and Sal. Ethan. And I've been. Today we're going to talk about Superman's secret origin from Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This came out in 2009 and ended in 2010. Six issue mini series that tells the definitive origin of Superman until the next one. Because they can't help themselves, they got to keep doing Superman origins. They got to keep ch- Got to keep going back to the well. well That's right. <laughs> if we don't make a Superman origin, all we'll have are other Superman stories we right. tell. And how will we make up one of those? And the funny thing is, I was going back and doing some Superman research and I looked at our old episodes of Back Issues and for the most part our Superman stories are Superman origins <laughs> and when we do go out of the box and do like a Superman incontinuity story like Grounded it sucks <laughs> <laughs> to uh, be fair you've done some because they've, they've either been great or they've been terrible right No, there I hasn't mean, really been a middle ground where you're like Superman origin eh. yeah no uh, th- th- that's true and it's because I think Superman's origin is so iconic and so simple and so American, mm-hmm. so it has to swing because there's so much importance on it. It's either good or it's bad. There is it's, no middle ground. I've never read a really bad Superman origin, right? Uh, but then again, I haven't been like seeking them all out. Uh, but interesting, incidentally, uh, so DC was like, we got to get the Superman origin on lockdown. Uh, <laughs> after Crisis on Infinite Earths, they're like, okay, all that shit about him being like Superboy and stuff, uh, like, a, yeah. like that sucks. That's gotta go. Get out of here. Also, no, we need an actual we're, Superboy. We're, no, we're just not. We're not gonna have any Superboy because the idea was that between the ages of like nine and thirteen or twenty or whatever, Superman was a Superboy, and he put on a costume and he fought crime and stuff. Yeah, I thought Superboy was an entirely different person. I no, mean, he became an entirely. Different they person. made other Superboys. Uh, there was yeah. Connor Kent Superboy, there's his son Superboy, there's a lot of Superboys. Yeah. But not but pre-crisis, yeah. Superboy was Clark Superman. Kent. Clark Kent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so John Byrne put the kibosh in that shit, and also... Because yeah, it was dumb. <laughs> so John Byrne does the origin, and then that was pretty much the standard origin. He also updated Lex Luthor from being like a mad scientist into being Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. And I'm not making a political joke about the current sitting president. <laughs> I am making a reference to the fact that Donald Trump was a megalomaniacal <laughs> character in the 80s <laughs> and yep. people like John Byrne wanted to make a parody of him yep. which is why there's a Lex Luthor book that has the exact same cover as The Art of the Deal. And if you don't think there are parallels between Lex Luthor and Donald Trump in the comics and in the past, you're kidding yourself. But they changed Lex Luthor into being a businessman. Right. and Because yeah. that's, that's the, where the Mogul, real evil if is. You will, yes. yes. Uh, because well, that's also like where you could hide evil. You'd yes. be like, no, I'm just, I'm yeah. just a businessman. Well, and it made I'm like it you and me. It's hard to fight by punching it. You can't just object, because it used to be Super- Lex Luthor would just put on a power suit and punch Superman. Right. Or, or like, come or, up with schemes. Yeah, or build like a robot to attack Superman or something. Yeah. And what's amazing is back when like, pre-crisis, you know, Lex Luthor came from Smallville as well. And he and Clark kind of like grew up together and Superboy wound up causing a fire in a lab that he built for Lex Luthor that cost him his hair and so he hated Superman ever since. Right. And, uh... Well, he shouldn't hate Superman. He should hate Superboy. Well, yes, but he knows who he is because <laughs> he's wearing the same costume and he aged with him at the same rate. Right, anyway, so... Lex Luthor changed. A lot of things changed. And then that was pretty much the standard origin for a while. And mm-hmm. then uh, Mark Wade wrote a story called Superman Birthright, which we did on Back Issues, which is a solid Superman origin story. And it wasn't meant to be in continuity. But when it was so celebrated and revered, uh, they were like, yeah, that's part, that's part of continuity. Right. Also, uh, it doesn't contradict directly, you know, no. anything else in the DC universe. Right. It so only addressed Superman and right. his family and that's it. Well, we're fine. And it's also, like, it's relatable. Well, yeah, it's not being about it's not about being Superman. No, it's about being a human, a human, and 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 finding your place. And it's also relevant because Martha Kent uses a computer, and so the kids so are all going to pick up, up this date. copy. Yeah. yeah, and and so that wound up de facto becoming the origin. And then Kurt Busiek wrote Superman's Secret Identity, and that was another origin. And they were like, look at all these origins, and so nobody <laughs> knew what to do. And so Jeff Johns like, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll write my own origin, and that's Superman's Secret Origin. As long as we're writing origins. As long as we're doing one. And since Jeff Johns had uh, gained his position at DC to the point where he can like dictate what's the Superman origin, mm-hmm. he was like, uh, it's mine. It's the one that I wrote. In so, the Six Issue Mini series. So did this become canon? Yes! This was written? Oh, not only... That, the reason we're doing this is because... Not only did this become the post-crisis canon and superseding 
all stories before it, even like two years before it or one year before it. How how are they able to just, just say change it? Usually they need like a crisis in order to change continuity. Right. But Sometimes, with Superman, they can just be like, ah, it's just different yes. for no reason. Yeah. Why? Oh, because like, it's on the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> well, then why do they need a crisis ever? Why oh. don't they just change things well, because whatever they want? When they want to change, they already do. When they want to change everything, they have a crisis. When they want to change one character, they'll do that. Like after Crisis, they were like, Batman's origin needs an update. But it wasn't just because the Anti Monitor was defeated or something. It was just mm-hmm. because. Frank Miller wrote this mini series called Year One, and for the most part, everyone was like, "That's awesome, I'm in." End of story. Well, oh, that, all you, you like need, that? Yeah. All you Corey, need. Come out. <laughs> all you need is just a few issue self-contained graphic novel that tells you what the origin is right now, and that's and that's pretty much it. Mm. Now, what's funny is they tried that with Spider Man, which you can't do because at Marvel it's all one continuity. Well, right. it's it has all, been for and it has been for seventy five years. So you can't just like put out a comic. And then just say, the things that you read didn't happen, now it happened like this. Because then people get really mad at you. That doesn't happen with Superman? No, people, people are... boycott that shit? Most people are like, yeah, that's awesome. It's changed enough times, probably, where they're like, There's this a... is just what happened." And in DC, you can change continuity whenever you want to. After <sighs> Look, Rebirth, he doesn't have a mullet, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, after Rebirth, they were like, fuck it. Yeah. It's all continuity now. Right. It all happened I mean, or it was, not. It was all headed in this direction. The years and years of reboots... Yep. Uh, you know, over over the decades. Yeah, we whittled away at your fatigue. In, in decreasing intervals between the, the crises yes. led us to a point where... Whatever you, you want. Just, just do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Nothing that's matters. And that's the problem with reboots, is like, if you reboot too many times, yeah. you have destroyed anyone's interest in your universe that you're trying to build. Well, there is no foundation then. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I Which, hate... Well, I mean, there's there's pluses and minuses to yes. that, right? Because your writing and your creativity is unshackled. Yes, you're, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, but you lose the constraints that are sometimes productive from having a defined universe. I've always maintained that you need an editor and you need adversity in order to make something truly great. Right, you need limitations yes. that the creative team has to work within. It's like whenever your teacher told you, write an essay, and you said, what's it about? They said, whatever you want. Yeah, and it's always garbage. And it's not only garbage, but sometimes it never gets finished. Right. Even though it's only five paragraphs. Because we can't work with, like, no constraints. Right, and even, and, and those who do, you know, God bless them, but they're right. so few and far between. Yeah, it's very rare. And so when people go, like, Marvel is a hard reboot, I'm like, oh, you trust the current crop of Marvel creators? To build a foundation upon which we can build a new and stable Marvel Universe. Instead of just sticking with the shit that, that Stan and Jack made. Like, I, I, I disagree. <laughs> so, Secret Origin is Jeff Johns just being like, let me take everything I like about Superman and then make it canon. Okay. So he hires Gary Frank, who is great, to do the art. And Gary Frank is like, I want it to look like Christopher Reeve. So it okay. does. Not now, right. there's a lot of backstory about that because Jeff Johns wound up working for Richard Donner back in the day. Okay. The director and creator of Superman 1 and 2. Hmm. He is buddies with David S. Goyer. Okay. Who wrote Man of Steel and the three good Batman movies. Right, right. So there's some weird incestuous stuff going on here where, like, Goyer is looking at what Johns is doing and their buddies and Johns is homaging Donner's stuff and now he's also like this has to this has to be in continuity like I'm changing how things were like so there's gonna be crystals and Jor-El's gonna look like Marlon Brando and like all the stuff that I like and remember and maybe had a hand in working on that that happened yeah screw Mark Wade, and also in a post-rebirth world where it's like what the fuck even happened <laughs> You know, like, Grant right. Morrison wrote Action Comics, The Origin of Superman for the New 52, which was met with mixed results. Mm. Uh, my results were it sucked, and a lot of other people were like, it's awesome because Grant Morrison's name is on it. Right. But, lo and behold, it didn't work or stick, and you can bet your boots that because Jeff Johns is, what? You know, like my bet your boots term? I just, I really heard bet your bottom dollar coming for some reason. <laughs> and you expected, you can bet your bottom dollar. You can bet and your bottom like, dollar. I was prepared to be like, what are you doing? You said boots. And I'm like, boots? That threw you completely off. Who says bet your boots? Is that a thing? <laughs> Who says bet your bottom dollar? <laughs> it's it like Shirley one Temple. One <laughs> so, God, anyway, 
Was it Shirley Temple? No. I'm just choosing a well, character from Annie, our time. Annie. Oh, yeah. Hey? I don't know. Yeah. Betcha Bottom Dollar. Dollar. Oh, is that a song Tomorrow. or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. There'll be sun. <laughs> anyway. Sorry. You know, well, it's news in the theater. I have to finish the line. I have to finish it. <laughs> Damn it. It's stuck in there now. Is that Lex Luthor or is that Jimmy Olsen? It's Lex Luthor. Oh, they're both, good. They're both gingers. It's pre-balding. They are, they are hideous. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. And not because they're a ginger, just because their face is No, well, that's the thing. That's a carnage. Gary Frank is not afraid to capture a moment in time. And sometimes that moment in time is not the most flattering. (laughs) But it is realistic. But it is iconic. I wouldn't say that. But I would say that it is... It is uncomfortable to look at. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes reality is uncomfortable. It's supposed to elicit that feeling. Yeah. Or the moment that he's trying to capture. Yeah. Anyway. Sometimes it's hyper real. Yeah. So anyway, you can bet your boots... That Jeff Johns, when he's rebuilding the DC universe for D- for post DC Rebirth, uh-huh. when he's referring to Superman's freaking origin, is going to be the one he wrote. Yeah. So this is the only Superman origin you need to read until Jeff Johns no longer works for DC Comics. Okay. And I could think Fair of enough. I I I I'd be hard pressed to find a better one. Okay. So oh, oh so this is a good story. Oh, I love it. Oh, thank God. No, it's breathtaking. So, the way you were being like, and Jeff yeah. John said no, and he's doing his own show for his Very well, he should, because yes. it's great. The story opens with Clark Kent as a boy, uh, you know, like preteen, and he's playing with Pete Ross, and he wants to go for the football team, and he's, but he knows he can't because we've already established that he's Superman. Or that he's... That it wouldn't be fair or That he's got powers. Well, he's, he's afraid of his powers. Like, at one point, he discovers that he's, like, really strong, because... He gets the ball, and he runs at Pete, and he slams into him, and just shatters his arm. Oops. And also deflates the ball. And so he is overwhelmed with guilt. Yeah. And Pa comes and picks him up, and Pa's like, you told me you were going to study at the library. And it's like, Clark lied about going to the library because he wanted to play sports, because Clark wants to be a normal boy from Kansas. Right. And play with his friends. But normal boys don't go to the library. Well, <laughs> normal boys lie about going to the library. Just saying that he wants to be what is perceived as normal in the scope of right. his social circle. Yeah, like, hey, we all play football. Damn it, I want to play football too. Yes, yeah. and but I'm also like, I would murder everyone if I played it, but maybe I won't. And, he, and then he winds up breaking the, his, his best oh, friend's Oh, wait, arm. I did. Yeah. But what's great That's is... It's not murder. <laughs> you think it's going to be rough because Pete Ross's arm is broken, but then he comes into school the next day on, with a cast and all these girls are like, oh, poor Pete. Your arm! And Clark's like, Pete, I'm so sorry. And he goes, what, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, Clark, come on, man. This is great. That's awesome. He bumps into Lana Lang, who's, of course, his Smallville girlfriend. Uh-huh. Um, it's kind of nebulous as to whether they even get together in this version of their history. But, mm, right. in, in, but she like, is there, though. But she is there, and she is totally into Clark. Uh. While she's talking to him, she makes him nervous, and his XR vision activates, and he sees through... Like, Pete's cast, and he sees the broken arm. Mm. At that point, I was like, oh, my God, is Pete playing it up, and it's a fake? Uh, yeah, no, no, he broke no. his arm. But he sees everyone's, like, skulls, and he's like, and he just runs away, and Lana chases after him. He starts and, giving everyone cancer. Right. <laughs> so uh, Lana chases after him. They're in the, they're in the gymnasium, and uh, she says to him, like, because they know. Like, she knows that he's special and that he has really? abilities. Yeah. Oh, because Clark is like any boy. Right. Who has powers. He just tells him. He oh, tells the there, girl who's There's a girl he likes? <laughs> Boom. Hey, you know what makes me different from all the other boys? <laughs> this thing that you should totally like me for. <laughs> but uh, he's he's afraid of it, and he's like, I saw their faces, or I saw their skulls, and it was disgusting and everything. And she says, do you remember what you said to me when you found out how strong you were? And it flashes back to when she found out he had powers. And they were like... Lana was hiding in the cornfield and the thresher machine was coming at her. Oh, God! So Clark, like, runs out and he throws himself on top of her and destroys the thresher machine. Wow. Then he comes out with his shirt torn and he says, I'm stronger than steel! And I'm like, that is so cute. That's like, cool. that's what an 11-year-old would say. But did yeah. he know? No. <laughs> really? Which is what makes Clark such a good guy. Huh. Well, they would have just both died. Yes. Well, yeah, but maybe. He, but he tried to protect. Maybe her. his yeah. meat and bones would have protected her long enough for the for old man Withers to turn off the thrasher machine. <laughs> Curse that old man Withers! I know. So I don't know if his name is. That. So wait, does old man Withers know that he's Superman too? Because he fucking destroyed. His I mean, like machine. kind of. Or is the thrasher machine on autopilot? Or was just no, like, he's there. He goes. Whoa. He, he pops out. He goes like, 
What the hell? <laughs> oh, okay, I didn't see that film. Gee, no. that's real weird and confounding. Oh, in, well, run along home. There I'll must have the been thresher. a giant rock. I will say, in Max Landis' American <laughs> Alien, everyone in Smallville knows he's Superman. Really? Well, that's at least cool. all the boys. They're like, and they just keep it to themselves. Right. Because, like, it's a small town. Well, because they, they, they don't want the government involved in their business. Well, that's fair, but they also don't want to, like, make things hard for one of their own. He's one of right, ours. Like, right. it's, I mean, he's cool. really not. I, I like that. I like that. Because, like, it's, there's no way you can keep a secret. Like, the, the Lang girl was almost <laughs> slaughtered by one, one of Old Man Withers' rogue thresher machines. We almost lost another one. But the Kent boy threw himself under there and uh, threw a monkey wrench in, those, in, in, in her death. So anyway, she kisses him, and his heat vision activates because he's nervous, oh, shit. and he blasts uh, his heat vision into the like Smallville High School banner, and it burns, and the sprinkler system goes off, and they all get a day off from school, and John picks him up, and he's like, get in the truck. You gotta stop. Like, well, he's more... Oh, you gotta stop. You gotta the stop. Powers. See, he's more like, he's just, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. But this he's is, not This like, is one of those moments where, like, you're my son, but... You're really becoming not my son. No. I don't know what to do. No, not, not, you're, you're not my you're, son. Like you're really causing like some I disown you. problems. He's no, no, no. Just like I've never look. He doesn't. My dad raised me. Yeah, and I know that. Right, I know how to do that. I don't know how to raise this. He is totally un- no. He John Kent, the right John Kent should always know what to do, mm. and in their private moments they don't. Mm-hmm. But he never lets his son or wife see it. Right, right. And this guy is just like, you know, he he's. He's conflicted. The fact is, he, Clark doesn't know he's an alien. Mm. And so he wants to tell Clark. And that's why he's so concerned. Oh. But Martha doesn't. Right. Because she wants to keep her boy like right. her. He doesn't want to... He'll feel like a weirdo and like I want him to... Yeah, and he's like, so, no, no, no. My boy can handle He's my son. How do they explain to him that he has power? They're just like, well, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, basically. <laughs> well, they're like, you're different. super weird. No, they say you're special. You're special. <laughs> Yeah, and, but why though? But he hasn't asked those questions because he's like a dutiful son. But like now that he's in like puberty, he's like he's asking every question. Right, right. right. But I love it because she said he says, "What's wrong with me?" And Martha's like, "Nothing's wrong with you. You're special." And he's like, "You keep saying that." He's like, "But that's because you are." Like she's yes. such a perfect mom. But uh, he says, "Martha, it's like John says, Martha, it's time. It's past time." And she's yeah. like, "No, but I want to like it. It's going to change everything in this house." And he's like, I, "He's like, change is inevitable, babe. We got to do mm-hmm. this." So they go out to the barn. Well, we can't keep him a boy forever. So, yeah. yeah. So they go out to the barn, and he's like, and they you see a couple of instances of like things that indicated to Clark that he wasn't dif- that he was different, mm-hmm. like when he blew out his birthday candles and created an ice like slope out of the cake. <laughs> but uh, he brings up the, the the spaceship, and he sees it, and he's like, "This is awesome." <laughs> And then it immediately recognizes Clark when he touches it, and Kryptonian technology activates. He starts hearing his native tongue of Kryptonian. Oh, he doesn't shit. understand it, but once it like analyzes him, it learns how to speak English or whatever. It sure, it uses it turns on the Universal Translator. Bingo! And uh, so Lara and Jor-El appear before him, and he's like, you know, this is your mother. I'm your father. Like you were born on Krypton, and Martha starts like losing it. <laughs> Yeah. Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 hold the phone, holograms, why don't we break this news to him? Right, he exactly. raised him. No, he's like, no, 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 like, yeah, jor <laughs> like, I didn't count on you guys getting really attached to him or anything. No, so, uh, but Martha's losing it, um, and he says, like, you were here, like, we, you're, you know, we sent you here for a reason, because, like, our planet was fucked, and we also knew that this planet was going to give you powers, and, like, oh. we, we knew, because his, his dad was the head of the science council, and he did the math and checked out Earth, and he's like, the yellow sun's going to give you, he's going to be like a god. Like, don't that's, worry about it, That's Laura. pretty awesome. Yeah. and uh, I mean, if you're going to do that for your kid, yeah, why not? Right? Why did no one in Krypton think of that before? Oh, leaving? Yeah, like Some going to a place where they'd be a god. Oh, uh, because most of them didn't look. Because they weren't smart enough. Well, yeah. Incidentally. Because if, if we discovered a planet where scientists learned that we would be gods there. We'd be filling the ark be, with people yeah. and just shipping them out. <laughs> Yeah. No, we would not. No. We wouldn't know about it. You would pay to go there. Twelve very old senators would be gone. would be in space right now. It'd be very hard to keep that a secret in the scientific community, I would think. I agree. Although, whenever the scientific community has a huge earth-shattering discovery, it takes them forever to make that announcement, and then it's always supremely disappointing. So, <laughs> well, because well, they, they have to confirm it to make it. sure it's true. There's a lot of... We have to do tests, man. Yeah. 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 Anyway, so... Also, his rocket is red, white, and blue? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like his costume. Not? So, uh, the, the, the holograms are telling him that he's not, like, the Kents 
child and that he's right. different. He's from another planet. And he's freaking and out. His heat vision activates and he blasts his heat vision at the holograms. Okay. And it and hits the ship happens. and it hits the crystals that oh. are like that come out of the ship and uh, they they are not affected. Okay. And he says he yells at them and he says go away and they do and then he runs out into the cornfield and know. he gets run over by a thresher. <laughs> Naturally, one of. <laughs> Withers is rogue threshing machines. It's robotic. Well, I figured I'd do some night threshing. And... <laughs> Damn it, Bob! Damn it, Kent! <laughs> Not again, Jonathan! You owe me another thresher. And then John comes out and he says, "Like I didn't know that your biological parents were going to have such like lack t- lack of tact. Like <laughs> I did know that you were an alien, right? And I'm but... like, he's like, listen, your mother wanted to wait, and I'm sorry. Like, and he says, I don't want to be somebody else. I just want to keep being your son. And he mm. says, you are my son. You You'll are. always be my son. Yeah. Yeah. While that's happening, nearby, in Smallville, uh, Lex Luthor's father has finished beating the hell out of him. And Lex runs out into the field to get away from him. And he discovers a big honking chunk of kryptonite. Cool. Okay. Just sitting there. Just in the field. Yeah. Well, it must have broken off of the ship, or it fell with the ship. The point is... Is that field never harvested before? I don't understand. What do you mean? Well, Well, wouldn't someone have found it? Oh, it's just a long time ago. Oh, it's not a... Uh... It's not a farm. Oh. Yeah, it's just a dirt field, but at the same time, like, it's a glowing green rock. Well, yeah, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's true. So he finds out he's an alien, he finds out he's not related to the Kents. And he and starts then, wearing glasses. And then his mother puts on these glasses. These big Why? satellite dish glasses. Because they want to avoid another problem with the with the heat vision and everything. Oh, they and think so the glasses she, will stop so, it? Well, Martha uses the crystal that... Oh, absorbed his heat vision was not affected yes yeah. and so she makes glasses out of them um, what's okay. funny is they're huge and he's like these are going to ruin any social life I might have had and she's like they're going to hopefully reflect like the heat vision that you have and like it won't cause any problems like listen them's the brakes honey like <laughs> why couldn't she make them stylish because they needed to be big enough like she couldn't make them small she made the. She's not really a glasses manufacturer, okay? <laughs> and she couldn't exactly call lens crafters and be like, "Can you make them out of these special alien crystals that you've never seen before?" I'm kind of impressed she was able to make them round and clear. Me yeah. too. The point How is, did she do that she at says, all? She well, says, she's an excellent sandblaster. Yeah, I mean, like they have, she, a, they have a lot of. Yeah, surprisingly. The point is, she says the, the the reason why they're big is because she says you'll grow into them, and of course, those are the glasses he will wear sure. when he's businessman cool. and and, and mild mannered Clark Kent in the future. Businessman. Well, mild-mannered reporter from the other planet. Wears a suit. Yes. So, Martha sends Clark on his way. Uh, She goes back into the barn, looks at the ship. She touches one of the crystals, and it gives her a glimpse into Kryptonian, like, life. Oh, shit. And it shows her Brainiac, Doomsday, Zod, like, all these things that are, like, secrets about... Krypton. Oh, you touch the crystal you don't want to see. Yeah. And then it's like, these are these are the horrors of, of Krypton, but there's also the these horrors so of Krypton. Krypton. <laughs> they show you like how, like life on Krypton and how people okay. dressed. And so she's like, oh, that's really Dressed sweet. Pretty normally. Yeah, they wear Superman they were, costumes. Yeah. But she's like, oh, that's really sweet. Oh, capes are in fashion. So yeah. she makes his costume Aww. based on the Kryptonian designs. Why does she make him a costume at all? Because so he'll, because he, he'll, so he can connect with his Because he needs roots. it. Is it still made out of, like, the blanket yes. he was swaddled it's, it's in? Not it's not so that he can be Superman, though. It is so he can be Superman, huh. because one day... Because shortly thereafter... Well, she doesn't want him to fly around and save people, does she? Yeah. Oh. Okay. We'll get there. She doesn't... She makes the costume... That's the next time we see her in the story. Okay. The point oh, is... Oh, okay. They go to the fair, and... Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the first time people have seen his glasses. People are making fun of him, right? They are, of course, making fun of him, and... Uh, Clark has to make up all these excuses about why he can't play football, and everyone's like, everyone thinks he's a dweeb. And... Oh, I'll break my glasses. It's perfect. Yeah, he's like, I, I, I've got asthma. I'll break my glasses. Like, I'll just have to adopt all the excuses that nerds give whenever they don't want to play sports. She took my dolly. I want a puppy. <laughs> he hit my bell. So uh, Lana is like, you got to come up with better excuses than the ones you're coming up with, Clark. Like, <laughs> oh, he, your because excuses are garbage. Because Clark is a bad liar. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> but it's sweet because it's that's well, who Clark Kent no, is. He, yeah, he always oh. needs to tell the truth. Exactly. Or something. So or we go to the George fucking Washington or something. Superman <laughs> doesn't lie. <laughs> so I did cut about, down that cherry. They're, they're setting up the uh, they're setting up the fair. Uh, Luther has a pavilion, which is a science pavilion, and he's okay. like, I hate it here, and I hate these people. He's backwater like Kansonians. Uh, Luther or his dad is Luther. But he's a douche who doesn't care, and he's okay. an alcoholic. Okay. He doesn't care about science or math or, uh, or his son. Okay. 
Um, so no, it's, it's <clears throat> plowing dirt. Yeah, it's young. I'm Alex a dirt farmer. Exactly. He's, Dad, you're never gonna make any money like that. <laughs> I'm gonna be a businessman one nobody day. Wants, prove you wrong. Nobody wants dirt. <laughs> they got plenty of it. So, uh, but anyway, Clark like goes and says hello because he's just meeting, he's meeting people and making friends and uh, what's it called? You know, Lex is talking about what he's gonna be when he grows up and how great he is, and he's like, you know, I'm gonna be the next like Albert Einstein or Nikola Tesla and. And uh, he already looks evil. Yeah, well, because he's a fucking jerk. He's frowning all the time. <laughs> so, uh, but he has this, like, but he, he's, it, basically Luther's selling, like, his books and stuff. He's trying to get money so he can leave Smallville. Lex Luthor, a high school student, is already writing books? No, no, He's selling books he has. Oh, books he has. okay. But one of the books is, like, an alien book, you know, and, 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 and you know, Clark's like, oh, like, that kind of, like, Catches his imagination because he is one. Yeah. And then Luther takes out the kryptonite and he says, do you believe in aliens, Clark? And it, might, and it makes Clark, like, fall over, which, of course, like, makes Luther drop the, the kryptonite. It shatters. Luther cuts his hand on some glass. And, oh. like, Clark establishes his continuity of being a clumsy dolt. <laughs> okay. But, uh... And also learns that that kryptonite is not, is good, for not good for him. Yeah. But he doesn't really understand it because it's new. You know, right. this rando shows him this piece of whatever, and he's like, ah, it made me sick. But maybe he felt sick because he normally would feel sick. Like, who knows? Maybe he's, he got the flu. Yeah, he doesn't connect it to the, to the kryptonite. Right. Yeah, he suddenly got nauseous and weak, and he's just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Then a tornado <laughs> comes through. Oh, right at that moment? Right at that moment. Oh. And uh, if you're watching Man of Steel, this tornado means that John Kent needs to jump into it like an asshole. But uh, instead... Oh, it doesn't happen here? No, instead something wonderful Clark pushes happens. him instead. Yeah. You lied to me! Yeah. So the tornado comes through. Uh, Lana is like almost caught in it and Clark runs out to get her. He catches her and they're both taken off into the tornado. Oh. But... Well, if, she's still ripped to shreds by the debris though. Well, he's, he's protecting her yeah, with his body. But like... He, what he discovers is it's not the tornado that's lifting him, it's him. Oh. And he discovers he can fly. Okay. And they, 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 he, he can't really control it, so like they go, you know, like half the county, they land in a river, and they're just like, Who are you? he goes, are you okay? And then she kisses him. Oh. Because she kissed him before, and it, yeah. made his, and it activated his heat vision again, but it went like, bzz, and it just kind of like reflected. Glasses, yeah. It didn't work. Oh, so thank he, God, I can finally make out with my so girlfriend. He can keep keep killing her. So he can keep kissing her. So he did. And then he tells his parents about the experience. But he's like, "I saved Lana. I kissed her a lot." No, he, he actually <laughs> oh, didn't tell him about that. He lies about the that. second face. It was great. He keeps he keeps the Lana stuff to himself. Okay, but he does. Oh, so he's not honest all the time. Oh, yeah. He doesn't brag to his parents about scoring. You know, like so many of us would. So anyway, he's telling them about how he saved Lana, and then he's like, "And then, and then she gave me a hug." Anyway, it doesn't matter. Moving on. The fact is, I was he great. Gave me a firm handshake and told me good job. <laughs> yeah. But uh, she says, like, but he, but he says, like, I could save so many other people. I could do so many different things with these powers. And Martha's like, yeah, I kind of figured you were going to go in that direction, so I made you this, this outfit. Okay. And By the way, so, I broke, like, 20,000 sewing needles. She did. Sew this yeah, so Wait, she's, actually? Yeah, no, she did. So she's like, you're going to have to help me make this, make this outfit oh, using your powers. Okay. And so they do. Cool. And, uh, and then he comes downstairs to debut his Superboy outfit, and he's like, this is the last day I'm ever going to wear this costume. Uh, <laughs> I look like a doe. Aww. Which I think is adorable. Mom, you put the underwear on the outside! Uh, yeah! He says that. He goes, he says, like, well, at least maybe later I could put the underwear on the inside. She goes, please tell me you're wearing underwear underneath that. And he's like, yeah, Mom, I'm wearing underwear. I'm just saying, I'm making a point. And she's like, it's Kryptonian fashion. That's what they wore on Krypton. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, they're stupid. all dead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, then we get to meet like Luther's dad, who's drunk driving, and he like veers off of a ravine, and then Superboy saves him. Oh. And then Lex gets a call from the like sh county sheriff, who's like, "We picked up your dad. He was drunk, and he thought like a boy picked up the truck and saved him. And, but anyway, he he would have died, but it's a miracle." And Lex Luther's like, "Damn it! Yeah, miracles don't exist. Well, not only miracles don't exist, but like." I wanted him to die. Yes. So I cut the brake line. Yes. So <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, so then we get to see Clark, like, tooling around, being Superboy, go, doing his thing. So we're reestablishing that, like, Clark Kent was Superboy. Okay. And he... No, that happened. That happened. I saw it happen. I made it happen. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they're... Clark's getting used to it, but he has two lives. You know, like, he's Superboy, and he doesn't... But he has to keep it a secret. He doesn't, like, really want everybody to see him. Mm -hmm. And... 
he's Clark Kent, but he's not. He doesn't get to be who he who he really is. So you know, he's 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 having a big version of the kind of troubles that anyone going through puberty does. Right. But uh, he he goes to the library, and for some reason, he's really like just interested in making friends with this Lex Luthor person, probably because he's different like him. Okay. And because like he displays a, a high degree of intelligence, and the guy, is, and he seems lonely, and he, he could use a friend. So nobody likes Lex. Oh no. Okay. Well, also because he's like, like he's very Lex. abrasive, <laughs> but yes, but he's, like he's, he's kind of a dick, big time. Yeah. Plus, look how he dresses. What a dweeb. He's got it's a true. vest. Yeah. But now Clark is kind of one of them, so you know he's. he's yeah. But uh, he's talking to Lex, and Lex takes out this big book of Metropolis, and he says like, "This book is about the greatest city in the world, and I'm gonna go here." And he's okay. like, "Because this is this is like the leading city in like science and innovation, and anyone who's anybody goes to Metropolis." And I'm gonna this is, is as far away from Smallville as I could possibly imagine. Anyway, so he meets up with the Legion of Superheroes. They show up. What? <laughs> because Jeff Johns and Gary Frank worked on a book called Legion of Superheroes before this, in which Superboy appeared. So he needs to make sure that's in canon. And so the Legion of Superheroes shows up, uh, cementing his book that he worked on earlier. Yeah. And so uh, that when you're like. Wait, who the hell are these guys? Oh, also written by Jeff Johns. That oh. Jeff Johns is a smart guy. And also, like, it's part of continuity now, so you better read it. So the Legion of Superheroes shows up. All right. And they're like, wow, it's Superman. Look at you. You're great. And he's oh, like, all adorable and small. Yeah. And he's like, what the hell is happening? And they're like, we, we're going to, like, we're from the future. I'm Saturn Girl, and this is Cosmic Boy, and we all have terrible names, and we're all from the 30th century, and, and blah, blah, blah. we don't give a shit about, like, maintaining the fucking no. space time Because they're them. kids, like, they're, they're teenage superheroes, okay. and they steal the time sphere from the, like, Museum of Natural History. So, like, they're not supposed to be here, and they're not even supposed it's to It's like Cartman, when yeah. he has that time, that uh, prank phone call. Yeah, prank exactly. Me. Don't change the past. They're not supposed to even be there. But they wanted to meet him because they idolized Superman. Okay. They're not even supposed to be superheroes because, like, the time police are supposed to be in charge of, like, the the, the, the present. But, like, they're kind of like vigilantes. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is, he they bring him to the 30th century because he's like, can I come with you? And they're like, mm, yes. So he puts on a Superman costume. Wow. And he's in Smallville in the 30th century. And he's like, this is great. Like, wow. So they go and there's some, there's some anti-technology terrorists who oh. are attacking. And so the Legion shows up and they, they murders the ball no they defeat them in like adorable fashion <laughs> oh my god that'd be amazing uh, then the this actual... is what we do in the in the third oh my yeah. god i so... have to fight against this yeah that would be cool anyway the point is that the, the leash of superheroes takes clark to the future right. and that they're and after they like have a little adventure where superman can be himself mm. in public and nobody cares right. or has a problem like, he, he, he gets a taste of it, and he wants more, and so the Legion's like, well, how about this? Like, every, like, weekend, we'll pop by this tree and pick you up and bring you to the future, and we'll go on adventures. And this is their way of being like, this is why Superman is so great at being Superman. He's had practice. Day one, because mm. he's been Superman, yeah, practicing in the 30th century for, like, five, six years. Okay. Which I really appreciate. That's cool. That's, yeah. It's a fun little, like, incontinuity retconning about how Superman can be the best superhero ever. Right. Now, in the 30th century, do, is there, like, material he's reading about his past? No, they have to make sure, and they have a conversation about, like, we if we if we decide to let him come to the future and hang out with us, we have to keep his future secret from him. Right. In the 30th century, Otherwise, they don't we'll talk... Otherwise, cease to exist. And yes. want that. Yeah, Brainiac 5 from the future is like, what are you doing? He's here, you're going to unmake everybody. You, you idiots. He's like, no, we're just going on adventures. He's like, like not... Brainiac 5 is like, hey, no, I'm part of the team. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so uh, yeah, they're, they're like, we, we like like the time he gets murdered by Doomsday, we can't tell him about that. We can't mm -hmm. tell him about how, how his dad dies of a heart attack. Like, we can't keep all this shit from him. I have super hearing. Yeah. What? <laughs> he's, he, well, he's very distracted by the cute girls on his team. So, uh -huh. like, when they have this conversation, he's not paying attention. Oh, good lord. Hubba hubba, that really, that's it? <laughs> yeah. So they give him a Legionnaire he's ring. He's like 16 or whatever. He's like 13. 13. So oh, it's wow. like, it's it's dialed up to 11. Um, then we also establish Crypto. Like, he's having breakfast with his parents. He's talking about leaving the Legion and being a superhero. And he's like, I gotta wear my suit, my costume under my clothes so that I'm ready, like, at any time. Uh -huh. And so they're like, oh, you like the costume now, huh? And he's like, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's fine. Then they, then, then they, you are washing it though, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's, it's indestructible, so it's probably resistant to, to sweat and, and dirt. I would hope. Otherwise, and, that's just going to be And, gross. like, premature ejaculation. <laughs> um, 
But uh, so the earth shakes and Superman's like, or Clark, young Clark is like, that's no earthquake. He gets ready. He goes out. It's another rocket ship. Oh. He flies out. He intercepts it. He catches it. No, uh, I can be the only one. Well, he pushes it into the yeah, sun. Yeah, he throws it into the sun. No, he, he lets it land. He goes, that looks like mine. And he's ready to go. And he's ready to like do whatever. And then he hears a bark come out of it. And he says, oh, and that's, and that's all you see of Crypto. But like it's establishing because it has yeah. to be in continuity. Right, like, that he has crypto, a super dog. That he's a super dog. And that this science family put their fucking dog in the ship and not themselves <laughs> and sent them out. <laughs> There's only enough room for one. <laughs> yeah. Honey, I think we know what we have to do. So, well, the problem is these spaceships are, it's physically impossible to make them any larger. Yes. They can only fit a thing like this big. Well, and sometimes they explain that like science is outlawed in Krypton. And so it was like, they had to keep it secret and small in order to actually like, keep it hidden from the authority. Right. It's, if it was big enough for a human, it would be too big. It'd be too noticeable. Big enough for a baby or a dog. Yes. That's just under the size. Right. Or maybe the other capsule was made for a baby and the dog jumped in first. <laughs> and, you know, dogs being the... Do- or the it, baby, like, died. Yeah, and they just let them... Oh, or that's, couldn't make it that's to the very house. very sad. They're like, the Johnsons are bringing their kid, but, like, I don't think they're going to make it. We got to... Look, make- there's, there's plumes of, <laughs> of, of, of magma shooting up. Uh, yeah. Just throw the dog in there. Yeah, we don't want to waste it. I mean, I built this ship. In violation of the sanctions. I don't want to waste it. I'm also not going to be cramped when I fly through <laughs> yeah, space. Yeah, screw it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> we can, I can make it. It's not going to close. Just do the best you can. I'll just hold it. I'll hold it closed. Just fire the damn rocket. <laughs> is Crypto like uh, like super intelligent? And it's like he's going to be his guardian? Because he shouldn't be. He's a dog. He's a dog. Well, he's a Kryptonian dog. He can be anything. He's a Kryptonian dog. It's not like he can speak... He's just, he's as smart as, like, a golden retriever. Right. Yeah. Which also means he I'm should not be help. able to, like, <laughs> yeah. not be able to use his powers in public. The dog's going to oh. be a menace. The dog saying. lives at the Fortress of Solitude. He doesn't bring the dog. Where does he live until the Fortress of Solitude exists? On the farm in Kansas. Exactly. He's a good boy. They train him well. <laughs> he is a good boy. Okay. Oh, thank you. You know, they sent him to our, top our, dog our. obedience school. <laughs> anyway, the point is, uh, so then... Uh, I'm just saying, like, when he... First takes a leak on something, he's gonna knock it it's down. Gonna, yeah, well, or burn a <laughs> hole through the middle of the, yeah. through the earth. He'll, he's gonna bark at an intruder in the night, and like a hole is gonna blast through the side of the house from the sound. Well, we don't get those answers. I'm sorry. Uh, so Lex kills his dad, uh, makes it look like a heart attack. He gets oh, the insurance money, and he's like, "I'm out of here." Nice. Okay. Then we cut to Clark's Metropolis, and. Metropolis sucks. Wait, why did he go to Metropolis? Is because, it because like Lex convinced him? Because that Lex, the... Lex told him that's where the future is. I mean, it, All right. He planted the seed and he's like, huh, you know, that asshole had a point. Yes. <laughs> Lex is here. He's like, why are you here? You told me it was a great place to be. For me! Yeah. That you are! Well, Lex, went to, went, Lex went to Metropolis, or yeah, Lex went to Metropolis like way earlier than Clark. So he's established himself. <laughs> uh, Clark just arrives and he bumps into this old lady because he's looking up at the, sc- at the sc- mm-hmm. skyscrapers. And he's oh I'm sorry and she's like what are you doing you're not supposed to be looking up in the sky like like a, like an idiot it's supposed to be you looking must not be from around here yes We're damn tourists yes so it's New York yeah uh, but Metropolis <laughs> well, that's why people think it's on the East Coast yes and Metropolis is depressed and like crappy and it was great mm. but now it's not and like the Daily Planet really sucks and like most of the building is rented out oh, or empty. And it, the, the circulation's really low because when Lex Luthor moved in, Lex Luthor uh, established his business and made a whole bunch of like money and established himself as like a beacon of hope in Metropolis. But he's a dickhead, so it's like the city reflects Lex Luthor's influence. Mm. And Luthor himself is like trying desperately to gain the favor of the people that he hates. And so he owns most of the newspapers except for the Daily Planet. And Who all, refuse to sell. Yes. Well, and they also refuse to write like puff piece editorials about how great he is sure and so that's to be why fair, though, he is a great businessman he is but he's also a huge douche and he also like he he gets he, he makes like scientific advancement and pretends like it's for the betterment of mankind and then sells it to the government for weapons mm-hmm. it's just like no one at the daily planet likes this guy right. <laughs> so look, clark gets a job at the daily planet because he's new and he'll be hired at a very low rate. Mm-hmm. So he shows up at the planet. And it, it, they also establish that the, the, the Daily Planet is like 
it's, it's shitty and run down and like you know the globe on top of the dead planet like used to spin it like rusted over and so it hasn't spun in years mm-hmm. there's a hobo sitting outside there's a there's a tag that says Gotham Posse yeah. spray paint yeah. on oh, it that's mm-hmm. cool that's cool that that's they're establishing the other world yeah like, you know Gotham exists yeah. well it's, it's just retconning so like yeah Batman's probably figuring things out right now he's probably falling off of a, a into a cave fire sca- I was gonna say a fire escape like with a, wearing a wool cap oh but, yeah <laughs> at this point he would be old enough for that yeah so Clark uh, gets oh. in, he gets in the elevator and he meets Rudy Jones who is just this fat disgusting asshole and he's like hi I'm Clark what's your name he's like I'm Rudy Jones planet sucks my job sucks i you know uh, like everything's crappy nobody gives me a fair break and he says like what do you got you packed yourself lunch huh and he's like yeah i made myself lunch you know i didn't want to you know I, I wanted to be able to i didn't want to leave the building you know and he says like no oh, lucky you i didn't i didn't get breakfast or lunch today he says oh do you do you want mine and he's like yeah that'd be great he takes it and then he of course eats, yeah and then he eats a sandwich in front of him he's like oh i thought you were gonna save that for lunch and he's like yeah i didn't have breakfast either anyway you have a good one a weird interaction yeah well we're establishing this guy's kind of a parasite well yeah. he's the boy in kindergarten cop that was just eating everybody's lunch yeah. <laughs> this is what he grew up to be right <laughs> what a dick so he arrives at the dead planet and it's like he's excited mm-hmm. but like when you look at it you're like oh there's like there's like utility workers like just taking things down and there's like very few desks and but it's it is a real newsroom mm-hmm. Uh, we get to meet the the character like Steve Lombard and you know Cat Grant and whatnot. We also meet Jimmy, and Jimmy is an intern who wants to be a photographer. Who so. looks exactly like Lex Luthor clothing wise. He's wearing the green shirt yeah. with the sweater vest over it again, and he's a ginger, and he's got this really weird like toothy smile. I guess he's like the anti Lex Luthor. Why does David Arquette work at the Daily Planet? Oh, uh, because that's what Gary Frank wants Steve Lombard to look like. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm a I'm a retired football player. But I really like it because w- when we meet Jimmy, Jimmy is just he's he's this eager go getter, but all he's doing is going and getting coffee and donuts. And <laughs> right. he has a he has a camera, but like no one will give him assignments because like he's just an intern. He doesn't get right. paid. I didn't hire you to take pictures. I hired you to get lunch. Right, and I'm not even really and, paying you. And so lunch is coffee and you. donuts. Yeah. By the way, that sounds like a great lunch. Yeah. But we meet. Uh, well, that's the thing is that Whoa. like they can't just they. <laughs> They, they have to send out because they don't make it in-house. And they, you know. But yeah, so then we meet Lois and she's screaming at Perry White about how she wanted to write this story that like blows the lid on this thing. And Perry's like, you know, Lois, like, not everyone is a monster that needs to be revealed to be a monster. Even though you understand ironically... That, that elevator guy! Yeah, literally, we just meet a guy in an elevator who will later become a monster. But, like, Perry's trying to say, like, Lois, like, you can't afford to be so cynical. Hmm. And Lois is like... She's, like, really worried that, like, she's gonna, like, become turn away heart. friends and... Like, yeah. Well, no, he's just... And... It's bad for her heart and... Oh, yeah. okay. And so Perry also, wanted to say, how will we ever get a husband then? I mean, more or less. <laughs> We don't go there. The point is that Perry's just looking out for her. He's like a fatherly right. type, especially oh, because Lois Lane's dad this is general. Eat you up, Lois. You yeah, can't, you, you... yeah. Well, also because her father is General Lane, who's a dick, and they haven't spoken in years. And right. So Perry's like her surrogate father, and Perry's cool, and he's just he's an old newsman. He just wants Lois to like he he wants her to pursue the truth. But he doesn't want it not at the expense of her soul. Clark and Jimmy go into the office. They all get their coffee, and Lois is like, "Who is this like six and a half foot tall farm boy?" <laughs> And Clark meet, introduces himself. And Lois is like, oh, this is perfect. Okay, Yo, Chief, you're right. I'm going to take Clark, and we're going to go. I'm going to show him around the city. I'm, I'm just going to be a good person. And he's like, okay. I don't trust this. So mm-hmm. she goes, come on, Smallville, let's go. So she brings Clark along, and she's like, hold on, I need something. Like, and then I just need to go through my desk, and her desk is a mess. Mm-hmm. And he's just like, oh. He's like, Jesus. And then Lois gets some flowers delivered to her. And he goes, oh, well, those should write up your desk. And she takes them and throws them in the garbage. <laughs> she goes, I don't like flowers. Now, where is it? And she finds it. A push-up bra and a blonde wig and a pair of sunglasses. She's like, perfect. And so she uh, she and Clark, like, leave the Daily Planet. And the idea is that, like, she really wanted to chase the story about how, like, Lex Luthor is going to be debuting this brand new metal alloy. And he's going to pretend that it's going to be for, like, the betterment of science, but it's actually going to be, like, a big, expensive weapon for the government. Mm-hmm. Now, Clark, put on this push-up bra and this wig and these sunglasses. <laughs> exactly. You're going to be they're a gonna, They'll never recognize you. <laughs> but, but the Daily Planet is not allowed to come to press conferences at LexCorp. Ah. Because Lois Lane works there. Right. So, 
So she has to disguise herself. Yeah. And we also reestablish Rudy Jones as a parasite because they bump into him again. And he says, so how's your first day, Clark? And he says, it's it's pretty great. And he goes, well, my day's really terrible. I didn't bring enough money for the train. And he goes, well, all all I have is a 20. He goes, well, that'll do. (laughs) Okay, that 20 is really well drawn. I agree. Yeah. (laughs) So then they go outside of the gates of LexCorp. And by the way, like, we also established this new thing with Lex Luthor and what a, a douchebag he is. Lex Luthor, every morning, uh, will go out onto the balcony of his office and then greet the sea of people who have arrived waiting at his gate because he will choose one of them at random to fix their lives. Oh, wow. Use his vast money and resources to do so. It's the Lex Lottery. All right. And so... But it's not a lottery. He just goes, uh, you. (laughs) Well, more like he has security people who watch it and then tell him in his earpiece, like, who he should help and because he's got like plans and how he's going to use and manipulate people and stuff. Oh, okay. And it's, it's horrible because like, while it seems fun and cool, it's also like it, it gets everyone in Metropolis on the LexCorp teat. Right. Everybody's right. begging Lex for, for what he wants. And of course, Lex is loving every second of it. Right. Of course, he gets all the praise, people. Yeah. But he doesn't have to actually give up that much. Exactly. Also, I never actually go down and touch them. Anymore. No, that would be gross. But it's great because she's talking about how like Lex is dirty and terrible, and Clark's like, "What's wrong with Lex Luthor?" Seems like a nice guy. Yeah, and she goes, "What's wrong with Lex Luthor? Where are you from?" He's like, "Smallville," and she's like, "That's where Lex Luthor's from." Oh, she doesn't assume. All that... you Smallvillians. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you so, are gonna stick together. Yeah, so she goes, "All right, you got your press pass." He goes, "I just got it today," and it's like a, as goofy a picture as he's making in his face right now. <laughs> and so she goes, "Perfect." Now you go to the front and you. Tell them that you're here for the press conference, and I will put on my disguise, and I'll go in the back. So she basically goes, uh, so while, so Clark goes up, and he's like, hi, uh, Clark Kent, Daily Planet, I'm here for the, yep. and they're like, oh, no, not Daily Planet. And, like, the security guard's like, take Clark, and they bring him out. So as they're taking him out, Lois sneaks Slips in. in yeah. And then, nice. uh, so we get to meet Metallo, this exosuit that they built. What? Okay. Well, the, 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 That's the, cool. the metal's called Metallo, but it's this exosuit. Oh. And, uh, but they're calling it Metallo. And it's like they're they're working it out, and so like Lois is watching it, and she's figuring it out. And then like a couple extra security guys, are like, oh no, Lois Lane, you're just blonde. <laughs> you're just Lois Lane with sunglasses and a wig. <laughs> exactly. Harum, harum, harum. So, Even though Superman is or Clark Kent is just Superman with glasses. Well, I wait. Maybe, and why did she bring the push-up bra? Because it'll distract like men. Yeah, just to make it more... make it more like believable that she's somebody else, and like because like you know it's All distracting. Right. Yeah, well, because you can get her way more. Yes. Yeah. Or at the very least, I won't be looking at her face. There you go. So they chase her, and she winds up, like, actually wind, like getting close to the edge of the building where the Metallo armor is, like, grabbing a helicopter and pulling it and stuff like that. So she trips, and the it just causes a calamity. The, sure. the helicopter smashes into the Metallo armor. Oh, she falls off the building. <laughs> oh, my God. Superman is, like... This is amazing. So he hears that Lois is falling. He's like, okay, Clark, here we go. Takes off the the suit. Yay. Zips out and catches her. And I love this look. (laughs) She's like, what? But he he has a look on his face because he is so in love with her immediately. Oh. Because when he met her for the first time, he's like, I've never met a woman like you in my life. Then he finally has her in his arms. And it's kind of like one of the first women he's ever really held. And it's this woman that he's, like, really into for no... Like, that he hasn't really understand why. And he's just, like... So, Superman, he should be, like, exuding confidence. And he's like, hello. <laughs> like, yeah. And she's, like, looking at him, like, what the fuck is this? Also, I imagine yeah. he's probably, like... Well, she knows who I am. No, because they've never seen Superman before. They've never seen Superman? No, no. She's seen his she knows oh, face. Clark Clint. No, he, she does not. <laughs> no, he thinks that. He's just like, hi. No, no he doesn't think. He does not at he, all. That, he, so, he's... He believes well, it's a disguise. Well, he's yeah, been he's doing it that. for a while, though, right? Yeah, so he's he been knows Clark that people forever. Don't, for whatever reason, pick up on it. Yes, but he's also never revealed himself as Superman yet. Exactly. That's he's the been Superboy. He's been Superboy in the future. Yeah, he hasn't. When he's Superboy, he's usually. Oh, he like, saved Lex's dad. Yeah, but in secret. Like, oh, so after that, he was like, "No, I can't be Superboy." Well, he public, hoped he, he picked up the car underneath. Yeah. So, like, sure, Luther's dad saw a boy in a cape, but like. He was also really drunk. Right. I, I mean, I just assumed that he kept doing that. He like did. Saving people around small. Yes, he not did. Not just in the future. No. Right. No, he also did that. So yes. there's precedent for people not recognizing him. Right. Because of the glasses. Yeah. So he, he catches the helicopter, he saves Lois, and he's just like, I, I'm just here to help. And then, like, he lands and everybody's surrounding him. 
And they're all just like, who are you? Do you work for Lex? Like, blah, blah, blah. They're like overwhelming him because like we're establishing just how hungry and desperate Metropolis is for a savior. Mm. And he's like, I'm not like, you're, you're crowding me. <laughs> Oh God! I need my glasses. I'm gonna burn you all to death. Yeah. <laughs> so he flies away, and then he goes. Uh, then he goes into the sky, and he remembers like when he decided that he's gonna go to Metropolis and be like a man, and also like be Superman. And his parents are like, you know, once you let that cat out of the bag, like you can't put it back in. Just just remember that. And he's flying over Metropolis, and he says, "I think I've made a mistake." Uh oh. Because he's like so inhibited and, and concerned about like what he, the impression that he gave was. So uh, we get to meet the crowds of people, the throngs of people who want Lex to help them. Among the throngs of people before Lex that morning is Rudy Jones, that f- parasitic douche. Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, the interesting the, you work. Oh, I know the the security guys. They catch his name tag. Works for the Daily Planet. Luther's like Daily Planet. Yeah, I want I, I want to get an in on that. So yeah, they ruined my my press conference yesterday. Yeah. So he chooses Rudy, mm-hmm. and then Rudy br- gets brought up, and he is so like unlikable and frustrating. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Okay, so Mr. Jones, what can I do for you?" And he goes, "You could do a lot, actually. I, c- I could use a lot. You could give me a bunch of money." Yeah, and then he says, "Like, well, you know, like we, 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 we will enroll you in a nice pro." And he has like he has like people counselors that like make them go through psych profiles to decide what they need. Yeah. And, and you know, he's talking, he's like, they're like, you know, we'll, we'll enroll you in a nice like education program for you to get a better job and blah, blah. And he goes, I've never really been much for like, for, for learning in school. Could you like take the money you would have spent on that and just like roll it into cash? <laughs> just, just like once the, the, once yeah. the quickest, I easiest thing. Now. Give me that now. Yeah. That money. Here, just give me the money now. Yeah. So, also like, a buffet. And there is like a buffet of donuts for the people who work there. And he's like, are these free? And he's like shoving them in his face. And he's eating donuts while they're giving them, the, while he's going through the counseling. <laughs> and then he drops one as they're rolling this uh, this mysterious pink radioactive runoff liquid that's spilled onto the donut. He eats the donut and becomes the parasite. We'll get into that in a minute. Okay. But uh, Lois meets Superman. She gets back to the planet and immediately starts writing. Okay. And she's like, Perry, I am working on something. Don't bother me. So then... Uh, LexCorp guards show up and they're like, we want Lois and the big guy. You got to come to, Lo- to LexCorp with us. And, and uh, Perry's no? like, uh, no. <laughs> and Lois like, no, 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 this is perfect. I, I, this is exactly what I need. Like we are going to go to his, we're going to get to meet Lex Luthor. I'm going to fucking ask him every question that he's refused to answer for the Daily Planet. Let's go. Come on. So they all go. Uh, and so they get to go up to Luthor's office. They go and meet Luthor while uh, Rudy Jones is becoming the parasite. <laughs> And uh, so they're sitting down, they're talking with, Lo- with Luther, and Lois just starts hammering away at Luther with all these questions. Oh, she's wow. like, she's like, how do you answer to this and this? Like, what about the, these military contracts? What about like this? Uh, you know, like the, the, the you're, you're cutting corners with this and how the, the, these these bodies in the river and blah blah. blah. I love it if Lex was just sitting there being like, hey, I called you here. <laughs> I'm asking the question. Yeah, uh, maybe we'll get to you in a minute. How about you calm the fuck down? Yeah. How about you zip it? Yeah. So. <sighs> Jones becomes the parasite in one of the most disgusting depictions of the parasite I've ever seen. It is horrific. And uh, I thought they were trying guy. to make him the parasite. Well, yeah. I didn't realize that he just did it by accident. Yeah. Well, in this version, he is. Yeah. So he hears all these people being slaughtered by the parasite. And so he goes, anyway. So Clark gets up and he goes, well, uh, we should probably go. And <gasps> I'll Lois, just shoot my pants. I gotta go. <laughs> literally, he goes, Lo- he goes, um, he goes uh, I gotta go. And Lois goes, I'm on a roll here, Clark. And he goes, you've been badgering him with questions. He's not going to answer. He's clearly not going to answer them. We're not getting anywhere. Uh, Can I use your bathroom? And Luther and Lois both go, are you for real? (laughs) (laughs) The wall explodes. The parasite comes in and he smells Superman. And he's like, you smell good. And he's just coming at them. And then uh, everything gets like, everything gets smoky and distracting so mm-hmm. clark just like disappears and becomes superman yeah and then takes the takes the parasite outside and they have a cool fight the parasite bites him it absorbs some of his life essence so then he becomes even stronger right um he just decides like okay i guess i'll burn him with my heat vision shoots him with his heat vision and uh, he kind of like explodes a little bit it's more like he his chest combusts ah but he's still fine like intact mm-hmm. and then he freeze breaths him keeps him like secure there and everyone is like horrified by this pink monster and this Superman who just exhibited, like, untold power. Right, right. And oh, Lex, so horrified by both of them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. And Lex Luthor's like, what the fuck just <laughs> happened? <laughs> and one person among the, like, masses that were waiting outside of Lex Tower 
says, it was a miracle. And Luther goes, miracles don't exist. And they're like, nah. And then he says, like, and, and Luther immediately turns the tables on Superman. He's like, you come down here and explain yourself to me. And Superman's like, no. And he goes, look, everybody, it's a monster who can fly. And like, so what are you doing here? Do you, like, are, are you, do you expect us all to bow down before you and your untold power? And Superman's like, no. And everyone's like, mm. <laughs> And he goes, like, I look, everybody. That. Yeah, Metropolis is being invaded, everybody, by flying men from Mars. And he's like, are you even human? And Superman gets really upset and he leaves. No. And everyone heard him say that, and they saw Superman's reaction, so they're like, is he? And so he's like, nah. Mm. Like, so Superman's <laughs> like, a little, bit of, a little bit of his armor's been cracked. Right, right, right. Uh, Superman goes to the roof of the Daily Planet to like think. He sees Jimmy <laughs> on, the, on the roof, and he says, don't jump! And Jimmy's like, I'm not gonna jump. What? <laughs> I'm here to eat my lunch. You're standing on the edge of the roof. Yeah, he goes, I like to look. He goes, oh, because Jimmy's like... Well, that's very unsafe, young man. <laughs> he does, but like... <laughs> I have that thing where like, I can't feel fear. Like, yeah. I do I do adrenal things and it just doesn't affect you me. Know, did you see the GoPro on my head? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, Jimmy's like, I wanted to look at the city one last time before I left. Because like, I have to go back to New York, uh, back to Yonkers, where I'm from. Uh, and because I failed. Right. I left. I'm not making it. I'm not making it. My parents told me I was never going to amount to anything, and I'm just a complete they failure. Right. And they were right. Now I got to go home because I can't even get a job. I'm like a I'm a coffee boy for the wor- for the lowest selling newspaper <laughs> in in the in the crappiest city in America. Oh, second crappiest city in America. Oh, you know what you should all do? agree Gotham sucks. You know what you should do. You should <laughs> go out the side, the gates of uh, Lescorp. Yeah, because every morning he might pick you. <laughs> I mean, like I have thing. been. Believe me, he hasn't. No, picked Jimmy you. is like, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh. I'm trying to make something of myself. Myself. And I love it because he says, like, your parents didn't approve of you going to Metropolis? He goes, my parents said that, the, they said, they said they, that I'd never make it. What did, what did your parents tell you when you, came, when you were going to Metropolis? And it cuts back to them and he, says, and he says, I'll try to make you proud. And they say, you already do. And, you're like, and he's like, and she was like, God damn it. He doesn't say uh, well, that. My but my parents he's, are not like that. No. But he says, you know, like, basically Jimmy is echoing Superman's own insecurities about, about coming to Metropolis in the first place. Mm-hmm. And he says, like, you know, I, honestly, Jimmy, you're, you're, well, he doesn't, he refuses to call him Jimmy. Everybody calls him Jimmy. Superman calls him Jim. Hmm. Honestly, Jim, you're kind of bringing me down here. Yeah. Well, no, he says, like, Jim, like, honestly, I've been kind of thinking about leaving myself. And he says, wow, like, if a person who can fly think, is thinking about bailing on the city, maybe I, maybe, maybe I'm not wrong to think about leaving. And he goes, well, you know, I don't have any friends in Metropolis yet. I'd hate to lose the one I've got. And then he's about to leave, no. and Jimmy goes, can I get a picture? And he goes, I'm kind of trying to avoid that right now. <laughs> and he says, like, well, it would really help me out of a jam. And so Superman's like, okay. Aww. So he poses for the picture, and it's the most awkward photo I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. And Jim goes, can you, like, put your hands on your hips or something? And he goes, well, that's very awkward. It doesn't feel right at all. And he goes, no, that's perfect. Takes a picture, front page material. It and looks like you're trying to hide a boner. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes, he brings it to, so while that, while that photo is being taken, Lois is bringing the article to, to Perry. And the article is about Superman. Mm-hmm. And about how, like, he's a beacon of hope. I believe it's called Superman is the Savior Metropolis, Metropolis Needs. And Perry's like... not the one it deserves? No. It's not that bullshit. Although I'm sure that Goyer got that line from here. But, uh... Perry's like, are you sure that you wrote this, Lois? Because this seems, like, too kind of optimistic. <laughs> and it's like that Superman woke something up inside of her. Oh, yeah, he sure did. <laughs> God damn it. He says something like, like <laughs> he, he basically says, she says, I've never felt better in my life. Okay. And then Perry brings out the photo he got. I was also going That's to awesome. die and he saved me. Yeah. yeah so. But they're also like, holy shit, who got this picture? And he's like, my name's Jimmy, Jimmy Olsen. And you're like, oh, yay. Everything's coming together. And then Luther spends his morning taking a look at all the articles that are about how great he is, except all the articles, that, or all the newspaper front pages are about this menace from the sky, mm-hmm. except for the Daily Planets, which has the only photo of Superman yeah. that says, "Meet the city's new savior, Superman." And he says, "Like, nice. oh damn it!" It's like everyone else's paper that I control is shaping the story one way, yep. but I don't control this one. And of course, that's going to make the Daily Planet the most Even, popular exactly. paper well, in the city, mm-hmm. especially considering it's got the best photo. Yeah, people walk by photo. and be like, "Holy oh, shit!" Tiny picture, tiny picture. Ooh, there he is. Yeah. Well, everyone's miserable, and it's offering them hope. Yes. They can't get from these other newspapers. Exactly. So, uh, Superman... No, no! Continue with the fear-mongering. That's what yeah. we need. So, Superman saves, like, some people from a burning building. Uh, Jimmy's taking all the pictures. Like, they're kind of working together. Mm-hmm. And, uh... Oh, so he's cool. telling Jimmy where he'll be. Yeah. And so Jimmy's like, let's get another picture, okay? Like, you're really fast. <laughs> Give me a sec. 
So Superman's like, okay, let's try something more impressive this time. He picks up a car, <laughs> takes that picture. He's like, oh my God, this is great. They're like, you know, I don't think that there have been this many robberies and disasters and like fires in Metropolis in a long time. And they're like, well, who could engineer that kind of thing? And Lois immediately goes, Lex Luthor, right? Yeah, so they immediately like assume that Lex Luthor is responsible for all of this, trying to lure out Superman and like get a, get a look at him. Luther calls up a scientist. He's, abilities. Yeah. And he's also like, he calls up a scientist. He's like, where's our jetpack? Like, where's all our jetpacks? Is it, did one go missing last night? They're like, no. And he's like, mm. <laughs> then, he's, then he flies on his own. Nah. Damn it. So, then he calls up General Lane. Because, like, he's Luther's like, main contact in the U.S. government. Okay. Oh, okay. That would also be an excellent reason why Lois hates him. Yes. Yep. Lane is basically strong-armed by Luther into getting involved in, like, Lois and Superman and everything. And they're going to do it via John Corbin, who will later become Metallo, who is, like, a soldier that really, really, really likes Lois. And that General Lane has been trying to push on Lois since, like, you know, years ago. Okay. So Corbin shows up at the uh, at the Daily Planet. He's like, hey, how come my flowers are in your garbage can? And he's yeah. like, come on, like, can I get a hug from one of your exes? And she goes, we went on two dates, John. That's not an ex. That's not an ex. That's not anything. That's... <laughs> You're really weird and creepy. Let it go, John. So then John, like, grabs her, and he's like, don't dismiss me. Oh. And you're like, no. Nah. And then Clark shows up. He's like, nah, hi, nice to meet you. Mm. And he goes, like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Clark Kent. And they do the, sh- the handshake where <laughs> Corbin tries to, like, give him a harder handshake. And Clark just, like, flinches a little bit, <laughs> and it hurts him. And he's like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> and he goes, well, I hope you have a nice day in, stay in Metropolis. <laughs> Corbin leaves, and Lois is like, who are you? <laughs> She's like, I have never seen anybody stare down John Corbin before. And he goes, yeah, it must be the glasses. Buy lunch? She goes, you're on, Smallville. <laughs> so, Yay. Actually, you should buy me lunch, because I scared of that guy away. Yeah. So, Corbin... Also, that uh, other guy took my last 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, they, uh, so, meanwhile, at uh, LexCorp, you know, obviously, they're going to sell the Metallo exosuit yeah. to, to Lane and the U.S. government. Uh, they found out that they can make it work even better using the kryptonite. Okay. Is it like a power source? Yeah. Okay. And so, so it's radioactive. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. So they plug it into the in, into the suit, and like they're like, well, we just need a pilot, and John Corbin, of course, volunteers to be Metallo. Right. Uh, so Lois and Clark I mean, wear the Metallo suit. Yep. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so Lois and Clark are having uh, are having lunch, and Lois is like, "You are full of shit." <laughs> uh, like, I don't you, know exactly. How. I don't know how, but there's <laughs> something about you. You know, something's off. I'm gonna fix. You don't actually wear glasses, do you? <laughs> oh, no, no, I do. They're huge. But, uh, so, she says, like, you're just so, you mm, there's something about you. And then he just, like, bumps into their into their food, mm-hmm. and he knocks over his glass of milk, and, she, and he's like, oh, I'm sorry, and then he hears, like, distress, and he goes, no, my inner ear infection thing, we dizzy, I gotta go. And she goes, <laughs> you said you were buying lunch. He goes, so, next time, and he leaves. <laughs> and she goes, Lois Lane, what were you thinking? <laughs> Like, you were going to make out with this freaking idiot. <laughs> so Who he, spilled milk on me. Yeah, so he goes to the top of this building with a smoke, and it's actually General Lane, and he's like, Superman, we need to know more about you. We need to have the scene from Man of Steel where we have the interview. So uh, uh-huh. we, so he's like, Will you, would you, do you object to having an interview at my federal office? And he's like, no. So they go, and they go to like the lowest... Like, sub-basement where this meeting is going to be. Superman mm-hmm. doesn't think anything of it because the U.S. government. Why would they be a problem? Right. So he's like, where are you from? And he's like, I'm from here. I'm from America. And he's there like, <laughs> and he goes, you know. <laughs> and he goes, I've noticed that you and my daughter Lois have quite a rapport. What's that all about? Does she know you're an alien? And he's like, this feels kind of like an Inquisition. He goes, that's because it is an Inquisition. Now you better answer my questions. And if you don't, then you're an enemy of the U.S. government. And he goes, eh, I'm not anybody's enemy, General. I'm going to go. <laughs> So he starts to leave, and that's when Metallo attacks him. Uh-huh. Well, as a matter of fact, like, first a couple of soldiers attack him because they want to provoke him into attacking U.S. soldiers. Uh, uh, they start shooting at him. He, like, very, very delicately like protects himself. Yep. Yeah. Then Metallo shows up and starts punching him, and then he reveals his kryptonite heart. Uh. And that, uh, of course, weakens him. He starts, like, deflecting bullets, and then, like, as he's getting weaker, the bullets start to penetrate him, yeah. and he's like, ah! <laughs> So at one point, like right before, like he's completely weakened, he gets shot in the forehead and he deflects the bullet off his forehead and into the kryptonite heart. Oh. And it overloads and it completely blows up and he's like 
And, and so as he's, like, gaining his strength and getting his druthers, like, he's getting bombarded by bullets, and he's like, this man needs an infirmary. You gotta stop, like, you gotta stop shooting at me and help right, this guy. Right. And they're like, no! And so he, like, blasts through the ceiling, and they call the medic, and uh, Lane sends Corbin's, like, horrible melted husk to Luther, and he's like, can you make him better? And Luther's like, oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> so we get mad scientist Luther as well. Uh-huh. So... Uh, while that's happening, Lane has declared uh, martial law on the Daily Planet, so soldiers funnel in. Why? Because okay, I don't they know, know that like declare martial law on, on a, a building company, or a company? On, on on the on the press. And oh. So like, they, and they're like, ah, this is really fucked up. Yep. But uh, they're like, no, no, no. You work with this alien who is an enemy of the U.S. government. So like, they're rolling out tanks. They got like the National Guard ready to go because they knew. They're going to provoke Superman into a fight. Right. And well, so, he declares the uh, Daily Planet an enemy of the American people. Yes. Yeah. They do. And so... I would have loved it just had he tried to, like... If Superman, while weakened by the Kryptonite, tries to fly out of the building, he just smacks into the ceiling. Right. Ah! 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 Uh, stairs it is! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Superman gets, like... He winds up getting into the sewer, and he's being chased and, bumped and harassed by by soldiers. He blasts through the seal or through the roof of the of the sewer, grabs the tank, which is this really awesome iconic image. Mm-hmm. Um, and people are shooting at him, and he's like, "What are you doing? There's hundreds of people in all these buildings. You gotta stop shooting at me." And uh, we don't know bullets are gonna bounce off. He's, yeah, I'll stop shooting as soon as you kill over dead. Right. And so they're 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 firing at him. Lois, of course, is like staring down her father, uh-huh. and he's like, "No, you're going to jail. I don't care, daughter or not. You're, you're like you're you're done." And then uh, Jimmy takes a picture of him, which flashes in his face, and Lois takes off. Uh, nice. And so Superman is just fighting the U.S. government, and then Metallo, the new, like round two of Metallo shows up. Luther's like horrible genetic experiment using kryptonite as his actual heart wow okay um, what's also horrible about this is that he looks like a like a frankenstein monster yeah, he looks because he's because he's a corpse ah. who's being like reanimated by the kryptonite Ooh. there's actually a moment where luther like takes off the mask and he says like it's alive and you're like okay john yeah, right. so then uh metallo okay. and of course metallo's like strength and no, so forth is augmented by the kryptonite for no reason so okay. metallo fights superman okay and that's real hard for superman because just being near him is weakening. Is weakening. Him. Exactly. So uh, he 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 knocks Metallo further away from him, and then Lois is like, Su- "Like Superman, you got to get out of here." And he's like, "You want me to leave?" She's like, "Well, yeah, because like he's made a kryptonite. He's gonna kill you." And she's figured out the kryptonite hurts him. Yeah. yeah. Well, because she because Lane Lane Teller Lane Teller. He's like, yeah. "We got this meteorite. We know how to beat him." Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Exactly. So he's so he's like uh, he's talking to Lois, and then Metallo sees her, and he's like. What are you doing talking to him? Oh, like, Jesus. damn it, Lois, this is bullshit. And so he, like, he he punches Metallo's, like, stupid mask off and reveals that he's, I was like, trying to punch his head off, but I, wasn't, I couldn't. No, he's, like, trying to kill him. But uh, he's... He, Lois is, like... Lois yells at him. She calls him a monster. Mm. And he says, I'm a monster! No, he's the monster! And then he shoots, like, kryptonite rays out of his oh, chest shit. to kill Lois, and Superman jumps into the way. Oh, wow. Uh, weakening himself further. And you know he's yeah, but would the kryptonite actually kill her? I mean, like it was, it looks like a laser blast. So yeah, yeah. it's just like a, and it hurts Superman pretty badly. Like so a I would regular say regular laser because it's Superman like, powered by kryptonite yeah, but it, or yeah. something. I feel like it probably wouldn't be good. So <laughs> she says, like he he says his body may be powered by kryptonite, but he still has to breathe air. So he grabs a sewer uh, a manhole cover, throws it at his chest melts it onto his chest to protect himself from the kryptonite, oh. grabs him, and zips him out of the atmosphere. <laughs> nice. And then uh, lets him, like, suffocate, He's but he's not going to die. Yeah, I'll kill you. He, like, I don't think he dies, but maybe he does. He... Maybe he's already dead, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't he's more count. Less, he's more or less a zombie, but, like... Except he's, like, conscious and, like, aware of Lois Lane. Yeah, no, and... he's definitely... Like, I don't think he dies. Okay. But I think the idea is that he he keeps him there until he passes Well, we know out. he doesn't die because Metallo is in the like, story. Yeah, but later... Like, yeah, but the... also, like, Superman wasn't sure he, that he wasn't going to kill him. He's right. like, look, he's got to breathe air. I'll just take him to the atmosphere. God will figure it out. <laughs> yeah, this is up to me now. I don't, I don't know. I, he's going to throw people into space and let God sort him out. Because <laughs> I think that's... Because later on, you'll see Mattel is made of nothing but machine. Uh, so like, He's more machine now than man. Well, now he's more man than machine. I mean, but like, later, he will machine. be. And the, so it's like it's it's nebulous as to like which version of Mattel you're even looking at. Okay. So in any case, he drops Metallo. And, you know, 
the and Lane's like, you attacked a U.S. soldier. You're an enemy of the state. And then like this crowd shows up and they go, you mess with one of us. You mess with all of us. <laughs> But basically, like, he, yeah, like, no, you, 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 you fired live ammunition and tanks in the middle of the yeah, city maybe with you no provocation. Just get the hell out of here. Yeah, so they're all like screaming at each other, and Superman lands between them, and he's like, "Every stop, I am not a savior. I'm just here to help. Lex Luthor's not a savior. General Lane's not a savior. I'm not a savior. You are all your own saviors. Like, I'm just here to show you." Like, a better way. I'm not here to, like, make things better for you. Screw you! I want a miracle! Yeah, but he's like, he's like, stop looking for miracles. Like, you you use each, like, each, every, each and every one of you working together will make the miracles happen. And then he's like, and that's, that's all I gotta say. And he leaves. And then Lex Luthor... to say about that. Yeah. So then Luthor tries to call Lane, and Lane won't take his calls. Mm. And so that's, that's the end of that. Yeah. And then Luther like takes one of his like awards and throws it out the window, and Superman catches it. It's an award yeah. he made it for himself, probably. It's got the Earth in it, and like people are holding it up. So yeah, I'm sure it's like a Luther award. But uh, and the first Luther award will go to me, and all the rest too. Yeah, for being the most Luther, <laughs> for being the most bald. The Lutherist Luther goes to Lex Luther. Lex Luther. Hooray! Yay! <laughs> so. But, so. <laughs> So Luther screams at Superman, you know, because he's like, "You think that you like you think you own them? You, that these people are mine." And he's like, "They're we're, n- what? We're, we're no we're not yours." Yeah, nobody's anybody's. Nobody's anybody's. Lex, he's like, "You don't own us. Now get over it." And then he says, no, "Like, I so won't. he so he leaves, and like the next article is on. Oh, he's like, "Us? You're not one of us." Yeah, and he goes like, "Why don't you go back to where you came from?" And he says, "Cause I can't. And even if I could, I wouldn't." Bye. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, we're, it's, a, it's a couple of days later or so. Like, there's some time has passed. And Metrop- or, and the Daily Planet is the number one newspaper in Metropolis. And, like, people are starting to, like, begin to hope again. And, you know, uh, Clark asks Lois out on another date. And she's like, no. Nah. And she finds a note on her desk that says, rooftop, S. And she's like, mm, gotta go. And she zips up to the roof. And Clark's like, okay. And then he, like... Goes out the back way. Uh-huh, I tricked her into having lunch with me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I tricked her into not having to pay for lunch. So he meets her up on the roof and he's like, you know, hello. And uh, he says, I want to thank you. And she's like, thank me? Like, you're the one who cat caught me off the, out of the sky. Like, what do you want to thank me for? He's like, for making me feel like I belong. Mm. And, uh, and they have this moment between each other where she's like, I didn't think that anyone like you could exist. And he's like, you know, it's funny. I was about to say the same thing about you. And you're like... That's really nice. And they're about to kiss, and then Jimmy shows up, and he's like, "Oh, hey guys, I was thinking I had lunch on the roof, and how many? Oh, I didn't realize was it was I interrupting <laughs> anything?" <laughs> and Lois is like, "Yes," and Lois is like, "No, you weren't interrupting anything. It's fine." No, Jimmy, get the hell out of here. Yeah. So, uh, so Jimmy's like, "Wow, like now that the Daily Planet's doing well, maybe we can afford to like get, scrape the rust off the gears and get the planet moving again." And Superman's like, "I can help with that." Turn slightly. Now it moves. He's like, "There you go." <laughs> And oh, there's like, a tiny pebble just blocking the gears the whole time. Yeah. What, what you guys didn't notice? Wow. You should just have a guy look at this. Oh, wait, because the only maintenance guy is Rudy Jones, and that sucks? Yeah. So he goes, well, anyway, I gotta go. And she says, wait a second. <laughs> I'm sorry. I see this whir. I would love it if it was just squeaking and, and creaking. Yeah! I'm sure it makes an ungodly sound. Like, thanks, <laughs> Superman. You're not supposed great. to be up there in the first place. <laughs> so uh, she she asks him to stop right before like he's about to leave, and he says, what do you want? And she says, uh... Are you a human or are you an alien? And he says, I'm Superman. Oh. She goes, that's deflecting the question. Yeah. yeah that's, I'm a, uh, I'm a, I'm a she doesn't care. I know that. Yeah. And he goes, and, and so Jimmy goes, Superman's pretty cool, isn't he, Miss Lane? And she goes, yeah, he's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. He's pretty cool. I was totally not thinking about totally banging this guy. <laughs> thanks a lot, Jimmy. So then uh, Luther is like, Luther's getting ready for his, his morning meeting with the people of Metropolis. He goes outside and nobody's there. Yeah, and no one prepped him. Oh no, the well because they didn't want to get yelled at. They were like, right. like you see the security guys are like, oh he's not gonna like this. <laughs> and he goes, good morning, Metropolis, and there's nobody there. Uh-huh. There's a guy walking his dog, walking by. It's just like, ah! and then this new person is walking around Metropolis and he's looking up at the sky and he bumps into that same old lady from the beginning of the book. Mm-hmm. And he bumps into her, knocks her shit off, and she goes, and he goes, oh I'm sorry, I'm new here, and she goes. You weren't walking where you're going. And he's like, no, I wasn't. And she goes, that's okay. Everybody here in Metropolis looks up in the sky. Oh. 
No, Superman her flies icy by. heart is melted by Superman's three sizes that day, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, or whatever metaphor you want to go with. Is that is that a new character that we're introduced? Right, to? like oh, it's Hal Jordan or something. No, it's just, oh, it's, it's, just, just it's just a new it's a new person. Like Metropolis is is, is getting an influx more of, welcoming. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a new young worker. <laughs> We're going to help the economy of Metropolis move forward. Oh, look, there's a little boy wearing a Superman shirt. Yeah. Yay. And then Superman's like, hey, I didn't sign off on the licensing on that. I also love Who's that. making that money? Right? Should Ironically, it's it like should Luther. be Lex Luthor. I would. Uh, I love this moment here. It's just, a, it, like, Gary Frank's art captures so many, like, real, like, images where Superman flies overhead and it blows Lois's hair back and she closes her eyes and just, like, enjoys it. And it reminds me of, like, a warm summer's breeze. Because you imagine, because Superman's, like, solar-powered, like, he's kind of warm. And when he flies overhead, like, he actually kind of, like... It's like a pleasant Yeah, like, it's like, a, it's like a pleasant feeling it's of, like... It's not like a cold Arctic blast. Yes, it's more like yeah. a warm Ooh. island breeze. Yeah. But uh, I like that moment. And, there's, and this, this book is loaded with those. So go to the description box below this video, pick up a copy of Superman's Secret Origin from Jeff Johns. It's one of the best Jeff Johns books he's ever done. Because he encapsulates the, uh, the, the the adventure of Superman while telling you the same goddamn story you've heard a thousand times <laughs> before, but in kind of like a refreshing way. It's kind of amazing that like they they chose to stick with the Chris Reeve design for Superman, mm-hmm. thereby cementing it in a bygone past time period. Right. But telling you it this happened a while ago. Yeah, but it doesn't. But it still feels like not too long ago. Right. It's it's conte- it's contextualized Maybe like ten years ago. Yeah, it's modern, whatever. but it's still like iconic. Yeah. Well, it's because there are still newspapers that are the main source <laughs> of internet. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that that really ages it uh, quite a bit. A little bit. But what's frustrating about this book is that David Goyer, writer of Man of Steel, wrote the foreword for this book and oh. read it. Okay. And in the foreword, he's like, "I'm writing my own Superman story right now." How can you miss it so badly? All you had to do was this. Well, no, I've got to write my own story. Yeah, it's got to be totally fucking He's different. got the goddamn t- a tornado in here. He's yep. got the you are my son. He steals so much stuff from this story, but it, but none of it works because Jonathan Kent in the movie is like, you should never be Superman. Fuck humanity. And like, <laughs> let those children in the school bus die. Like, that's not what the lesson is here. Like, it's nope. just, Where it's did just, that come from? Where did that come from? David S. Goyer. <laughs> not from Jeff Johns, I'll tell you that much. And the tornado, like, no. Jonathan Kay doesn't leap into the tornado hoping to die like a gazelle into traffic. Don't. Don't do it. I've got this. Die. <laughs> no, Superman leaps into the tornado because he can't be hurt and saves someone close to him. Like he's supposed to. Like he would. Like he does in every goddamn version. Except one. And the one that so many people really love. That's my definitive Superman. The one that murders people and lets his father die. Well, it is a murder them. He just chooses not to save anyone. No, he snapped yeah, that guy's Lane. neck. Yeah, he snapped, a, he snapped that one guy's neck. All right, yeah, but like, I mean, did he, he snapped really that guy's murder neck him? that one time? Yes, that's murder. <laughs> well, Superman fucking asphyxiates Metallo in this. That's true. Was, was it premeditated but it's question, or was it it's reactionary? Re- it's questionable as to whether he was actually, like, alive or not. He, yeah. Was he alive in the first place? Yeah. Well, that's true. Well, Zod wasn't a human, though, so does it doesn't really matter. Yeah, he was turning into a monster. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was turning into a monster. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys next week with an new episode of Back Issue of Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Ben. See you next week. You know what's funny? Yeah. <laughs> Superman kills a guy in this book, maybe. Maybe. And, and no one is freaking it, out of it. And it doesn't, it's still like, hopeful. Better. Yes. Yeah, it yeah. still gets it right. Yeah, Because he also smiles a lot. Well, yeah, that's the thing. Like, yeah. Like, without the aid of CGI. Steel, killing Zod isn't even the worst Sin, of no. Steel. That's right. Everybody thinks that that's thing. my problem with the book or with the movie. No. Yeah, it's just it's just the button on how on like everything sucks. being wrong. It was the last chance for the movie to redeem itself, and it didn't. Right, like everything's wrong, to. and then he murders a guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like thanks. We're gonna make Zod also the first villain. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's also let's, it's just, let, everything's. Like, wrong. And then the next villain's Doomsday. Yeah. I'm sure everyone will love the 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 the. the the battle of wits between Superman and Max Landis Lex Luthor that, like, they can never do now. Because Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor was modeled after Max Landis. Oh, really? Yeah, arguably. Interesting. Because uh, Zack Snyder was, like, really mad at Max Landis' teardown of his movies. And so he was, like, ah! 
do an impression of him because Landis and Eisenberg work together on American Ultra. Yes. And he does a really, really funny impression of him that's exactly the same thing as his Lex Luthor impression. Wow. So that's why. That's why his hair looks like Landis's hair when he made the when he made those videos, and that's why that's why he acts like a fucking idiot. Well, I guess Landis got the last fucking laugh on that one. Wait, I, I don't think so. Well, <laughs> he got the next laugh. And then, <laughs> and then but the last laugh was really on him. Was, probably. Does, does Max Landis also no, no like, one's laughing. grab pieces of candy and just shove them in other people's mouths I, sometimes? I, <laughs> I would be willing to bet $5 that he does that. Yeah. That that's happened at least I'm one sure time. I'm sure he does that. That, you, I believe, yeah, you a mean, thousand yeah. percent. Oh, that like Max Landis dropped some Molly, went to a party that he invited all of his friends to, and then shoved a Jolly Rancher in somebody's mouth uncomfortably? I bet that's a story. That's told by it's corroborated by eleven people. Yeah, I'm no sorry, Max. I'm sorry that happened. That's believable. That thing we made up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet it happened to Jesse Eisenberg, and that's why he did it. 